This is Larry Jordan, the host of the Digital Production Buzz. The following interview is an excerpt from a recent program. To hear the entire program, visit digitalproductionbuzz.com. Larry O'Connor founded Otherworld Computing, which is also called OWC, in 1988. Their website is macsales.com. They've been supporting all things Mac for more than 25 years and were recently recognized as one of the fastest-growing privately held companies in the Chicago area. They are also a current sponsor of The Buzz, for which we're grateful. Hello, Larry. Welcome back. Hey, Larry. Thanks for having me. It's always a delight. Now, I know that Mike is perhaps not so interested in this, but some people covet jewelry or fine wine. Me, I love cables. Lots and lots of audio cables and video cables. Are you kidding? We're talking to Larry about cables? Video cables and audio cables. It's going to be great. But you tell me that... Larry came on the show to talk about cables? Larry, did you come on the show to oh, talk I about cables? <laughs> yeah, I've been taking a moment for my travel to talk about cables. I'm not sure we can slip other stuff in there, but you know, cables, uh, Michael, Michael, you are you are totally losing well, uh, the significance of this. I'm event. looking at the paragraph. Yep, we're talking to Larry about cables today. Okay, Larry, go ahead. <laughs> Larry, Michael has no respect, no respect for the quality work that people need to know about to have cables function properly. And and now you're telling me that cables are not created equal. <laughs> Indeed. You know, it's, it's, cables are a tough thing even. You, know, you certainly can't get excited talking about cables, but if you don't have good cables, if you don't have a good cable in your workflow, you know, a cable can be the most the troublesome part of your setup when everything else seems to be working right or should be working right. As I'm sure you've already uh, experienced multiple times, you know, the weak link uh, and the, the weakest link in the chain it brings the whole chain down, and it's really important to have cables that, you know, quite frankly, don't become that weak link. Well, now, let's just talk about that for a second, because um, a cable's just got wires in it and a connector. What makes poor quality? Well, you have different, there's different grades of copper, and you have different amounts of copper, different amounts of the conductor in general, whether it be copper or silver, another typically copper. The other, uh, and, and, again, if we're looking at Thunderbolt cables, just as one example, then they all go through the same certification. You can't have a... Uh, a Thunderbolt cable, you know, sold as a Thunderbolt cable without, you know, that product being never been certified. However, you do have a lot of free will and a choice as the manufacturer, you know, what kind of cable, what type of materials you use, you know, how the strain release is designed, and the general flexibility, and that comes back to, again, the quality of the copper that's, you know, inside. So it's the greatest copper is inside. And you can have a cable, I mean, there's plenty of cables that, feel really good I and mean, you think wow this cable is super thick and heavy duty and everything else it must be a great cable but if they're compensating for a lower grade material that's inside or it just got a super thick housing you know, you know the, the touch and feel does not a good cable make and on a thunderbolt cable certainly in the case of the cables that we put out there you know one of the, the weakest things that we've seen and some of the other uh, i guess let's say options that are out there or in the strain relief, I mean, especially if you have a more rigid cable and then you don't have a good strain relief from multiple plug in and plug out, you start to see failure. In fact, you see failures most often on all the strain relief. If you look at just a physical cable failure on a cable that's going to work out of the box without issue, now the strain relief is, again, typically your, your weak link in the, uh, in the equation. Well, I think on and on. I mean, it just gets, I mean, then, I mean one person I talked to you earlier said, well, how do I know a good centerball cable from a bad centerball cable? I said, well, it has a logo on it. You're golden. <laughs> That's an easy way to to do it. But <laughs> yeah, if you if you touch and feel our cable, you notice. I mean, it's got good flexibility, so it doesn't put a lot of strain, you know, a lot of stress on that uh, connection point between the uh, where the cable goes into the connector and the strain relief is at a good size and of a good material that significantly, uh, you know, how to say, reduces just even the probability of that kind of wear point. When you have a very rigid cable, you're always putting pressure at that connection point. And a bad strain relief, you, know, you can end up with a breakage there, or not enough of a strain relief, you know, even unbeknownst to you, you can actually tug it on the uh, the actual conductors inside that cable and cause a break or a stretch, you know, a reduction in uh, a proper connection, you know, in, uh, undetectable. For the, for the how, how would you even quality control that, that thing? Because you're manufacturing thousands of these things. You know, it's a process, and as far as the QC side, I mean, it's, it's very easy to uh, turn the materials and the, uh, you know, what, I mean, we, number one, we dissect cables from each production. Number two, you know, we do a significant number of, you know, 
I guess you could say, a random check in terms of just the cables you're out to make sure nothing went wrong. That's in the middle. But it really comes down to the material. The choices, you, I mean, the conductor is the conductor. It's either the correct conductor or it's not. The strain release is either the correct material or it's not. I mean, a lot of this is detectable for us. I mean, we can, from just visual inspection and the rest is from you know, straight, you know, yeah, testing like we do on every product that we put out the door. So there is low quality copper and there is high quality copper. I mean, isn't copper copper? There's different grades of copper, and while copper is copper, the level of purity of the copper makes a big difference in terms of the electrical flow. In Ethernet cables, Larry, when we move from say Cat four to Cat five to five e to six, our speeds improve. Are we looking at improved performance with higher grade? cables, or are we just looking at preventing problems? You're typically looking at preventing problems. I mean, you to have CAT 6 and 60, I mean, the higher certification, you've got to have, you should, the most sort of have to have the right, uh, you have to, and well, the past certification, you've got to have the right grade copper inside. But depending upon, you know, what your application is, I mean, some of the flexibility, some of the, in Ethernet cables, you got stranded or solid, how to say core, but you know, if you look at a, and that's, now, that's pretty much the case with any of the different cables and copper applications. But if you have an overly thick cable, that can sometimes is compensation for, or rather compensating for uh, a low grade of uh, the actual conductor that's within the cable. Back in, back in the days when we were focusing principally on audio cables and to a lesser extent video cables, we had to deal with things like cold solder joints, which would cause an audio cable not to function properly. Do we need to even worry about sure technical stuff like solder joints when we're dealing with high-end data cables like we're talking about now? You do, and that's, I mean, I would, I would say that the equipment that, you know, how to say, does the, uh, performs those connections, I mean, most of that now surface mountain side, as opposed to the old, I mean, it's just not hand-done, I guess would be the easiest way, I mean, it's auto, either auto or a surface, so yes, it would still technically be an issue, but it's not one that, I would be very surprised to run into that kind of issue today. But yeah, there are solder joints within the cable. I mean, that's how it gets from the connector. The side clusters, even, I mean, you even have that potentiality with the Thunderbolt chip. On a Thunderbolt cable, I mean, each end you know, has an active control. Well, an active, uh, it's basically an active control. I mean, they're active cables. Now, that is another point of potential failure. But it, for Intel to certify your Thunderbolt cable design, uh, you've pretty much got to be building to an accepted reference and with a manufacturing process. That means. I mean, this 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 kind of thing shouldn't be happening today. However, I mean, you look at HDMI cables and video cables. You know, even USB cables. I mean, just to get right down to the cables that we ship you know, with our USB products and the firewire. You know, same kind of story. You know, we just don't throw any USB cable in. You know, the lowest bidder. USB cables of all the things in the world should be the you know the the, the biggest commodity cable you know, around. But the reality is, there's a big difference in you know, what you can get in the USB cable. And the USB cables that we put with our products you know, typically come from a single factory that has been approved for you know, both their EFI and RF. Not to say how much they shield and how much they lot out of them. And again, the copper that we know is inside. I and mean, as you get into the higher data rates, you know, it's, it's, I mean, the same translate with audio and the uh, audio is a little different, sorry, but as you get into the higher data rates, you can't have, the more you compromise on your cable quality, you know, the more likely that you're going to have issue and error. Now, with lower speeds, there's, you know, there's plenty of room for minimal, no, there's simply more wiggle room. But at higher speeds, you're still going to get the link. I mean, the bottom line is that cable, and you're plugging into devices that are saying, I'm, hey, hello, I'm USB 5G. And a control that says, well, hello, you know, start talking to me, Dad, or I have data to talk to you. If now, Larry, those, Larry, hang on a second. I need you to move a little bit in a different direction because we're starting to lose your phone. It's starting to, to fade out. But one thing I want to oh. come, one thing I want to come back to is, is, is if we own cables already and they seem to be working okay, are they okay or are there tests that we can do without having access to hundreds of thousands of dollars of test gear to know that the cables are okay? Because the one thing that we have to trust is our data is safe and bad cables puts that into a, into jeopardy. Yeah, OSX does an amazing amount of error correction. It's one of the overheads on their, their data connection. So in terms of if there was a problem, you may not, depending if it's a minor issue or you know, borderline, you may not know that the issue is there. Having said that, there's not really an easy way to, uh, for an end user to test their cable. But if you're having issues, I mean, hey, you know, the easiest test is if there's any kind of issue, you don't think you're getting the data rates you should be getting, it will show up in data rates, you know, swap the cable. Thunderbolt cables, I think you really don't have to worry about that with, other than, again, the other aspect is, if you start with a quality cable, 
you know, whether you're just plugging it in and forgetting it or you're on the road and constantly you know, disconnecting and connecting that device, you know, the higher quality product reduces the probability of just a physical failure mm -hmm. down the road. Something I, I, I never even think about. If something goes wrong, I don't think about the cable. And sometimes it probably is the cable. I've learned something from the you, cable. Larry. Thank you. <laughs> Michael has been uh, oh. Michael's been taking <laughs> notes on this during the entire presentation. He's now got seven legal sheets of paper marked exactly. up with I, what he needs to know about. I will cables. buy all my cables from OWC. And I was about to do I was about to do this incredible demonstration of cable coiling. Oh but, my gosh, you look do uh, we have a time? No, no we unfortunately don't we time. don't have oh, time. It's terrible. I, I'm so sorry that uh, it, we, it was so close. I mean, it, Larry would have loved to have seen this. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, for people that want to know about not only the cables but other products that OWC's got, where can they go on the web to learn more? Hey, they can go to our new uh, storage focus site at owcdigital.com. And, of course, they can find everything under the sun at uh, macsales.com, M-A-C-S-A-L-E-S.com. And just one other super quick thing. Now, the same kind of thing exists with memory. It's all memory is created equal. Well, hold it. We're going to have to talk. We're going to talk memory a little bit later. We'll come back to that. But, Larry, thanks for joining us. Yeah, today. thanks, Larry. Take care. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Bye now.